I'm Rob Kellogg, and we're, today we're going to talk about where your fire extinguishers need to be and what the minimum requirements are for when you're on the job site. Now, we talked in a previous segment on what a fire extinguisher is and can do, what its limitations are by its classification, A, B, C, D, and K. Now we need to understand how far away those materials or those extinguishers need to be to your materials and potential fire exposures as we produce flames, either through welding operations, cutting, things of that nature. So without further ado, let's take a look at a few things. First, the National Fire Protection Association, under Volume 10, gives us our standards and when we're dealing with fire extinguishers. You're going to get a rough idea through OSHA's regulations on how those should be implemented, but the specifics you're going to find in a whole different standard within the industry on how that's done. So the standard tells us that the minimum extinguishing size that we have on site is no less than a 12 pound, 12 pound or greater if you're going to have it out there on the job site. These are minimums, okay? Now the classifications, if we're talking about a class A fire, the minimum rating is a 2A. And this has to do with the amount of material inside the extinguishing agent into the volume of flames that it will be able to, to take care of. We won't get into the details of those. Also, if you're going to be dealing with a class B extinguisher, it must be rated at no less than a uh, B20 or 20B, excuse me, 20B rating. These are, again are all minimums. So if you have a 40B on site, you're good to go. But if you don't have at least a 20B, you don't have the proper extinguishing agent on site to deal with the situations. Now, some situations that we'll deal with is not just storage, but we also have to worry about uh, accessibility to that storage and a proximity to activity. And as we look here, your ma maximum coverage for one fire extinguisher is 3,000 square feet per level. And here's what we need to understand. If my lower level is 1,500 and my upper level is 1,000 square feet, the combination between the two is 2,500 square feet, correct? But the fact is, I have two different levels. I need two separate extinguishers, one for each level. And they must cover no more than 3,000 square foot each. Now, distances away from either storage materials or your activities that produce a heat source greater than 400 degrees. Grinding is included. If you're going to be grinding, on materials that produce more than 400 degrees Fahrenheit, you must have a fire extinguisher within reach of that activity. And in most instances, you're going to need a fire watch. Again, that's with uh, areas that you can't see and you need a third party, second, somebody secondary, to actually watch that activity with their own fire extinguisher so radiant heat doesn't transfer. So if you do any kind of welding on a <clears throat> steel bulkhead uh, wall, and that heat will radiate to the other side of the room, and that operator cannot see that side, you must have a fire watch on the other side, and that fire watch must have the proper extinguishing materials uh, agents, and they must remain on site no less than 30 minutes after the last heat source is exposed to that material. 30 minutes at least. So with the actual activities, Let's take a look here. The first activity, welding of any type, arc, uh, tigs, mig, doesn't matter whether you're doing uh, brazing operations, blow torch, oxycetylene operations, it's all included. You have to have that within reach of the actual person doing the activity if they're there by themselves. So it has to be right there. They cannot stand up and walk away. They have to have it within their activity themselves. So if you have a secondary person or a third party fire watch, they can be a distance away so long as they have that right there when it's happening, that's fine too. So if you've got fuel storage that's class B rated, you must have a class B extinguisher and it must be no farther than 50 feet away from that storage material. In case the stored material catches fire, you have an extinguishing agent that meets those requirements. Now the only alternative to fuel storage is fuel transfer. So if I'm going to be taking a can of fuel, gasoline, and I'm going to be putting it into a tool like a, a saw um, or a, a generator of that, that nature, you have to have a fire extinguisher within 25 feet 
of that activity. And it's got to be rated class B, no less than 20. And it has to be within, again, 25 feet of fuel transfer from one container to the next. That's throughout all of construction activities. So if you get into a class A fire, you must have an extinguisher within 75 feet during the process. Now, when we get into an occupied building, then it goes into every 100 feet. Again, we're talking about construction practices when it comes to your applications and what you're doing out there as tasks. You must have that within these distances. And don't forget that 25 foot requirement when it comes to transferring fuels from one container to another or from a container to a piece of equipment. Doesn't matter whether it's a front end loader, forklift, chop saw, doesn't matter. If you're doing it and you're transferring the fuel, you must have that within 25 feet. So with that said, understanding your fire extinguishers is one thing. Understanding the requirements, how far away they need to be, is another thing which, which we just got through covering. If you have any questions, go back and review this. And if you still have questions or there are certain circumstances that I didn't cover for whatever reason, please feel free to call us. And that's what we're here for is to help you help you. So with that, remember, safety is not a mindset. State of mind. Have a good day.